Please introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Nick, Nick Winstone from England, and I'm running a, a small eco lodge at Captain National Park called Forest Floor Lodge. Okay, so it's in the park actually. It's on the fringes on of the, the edge, park. edge of the park. Yeah, okay. It was originally a uh, ranger's station, uh, the building, so we took over the building and uh, we extended it and refurbished it, and we have now a combination of um, safari uh, tents, so deluxe okay. safari tents, uh, and also we have traditional Vietnamese wooden houses. So we've built within the grounds of the old uh, ranger's lodge, so no trees were chopped down, uh, it's built amongst the, the trees itself, um, and so yeah, that's what we have there. Okay, wh who is your primary clientele? Um, at the moment, the majority of the business comes from Northern Europe um, and America, mm -hmm. and also from Australia. Typically, they would be um, middle-aged to older people mm -hmm. um, who are going on a general tour through Vietnam, but want to experience a little bit of the environment, want to experience a little bit of forest. Okay, so wildlife. you do get some, do you get specifically people who are interested in nature and conservation? Yeah, we do. We get a lot of the, the Vietnam is, uh, well, Cat Tien Forest is very good for birds. Yes. So there's a, yeah. there's a number of endangered birds here. And certainly okay. we get big groups of the bird watchers. Right, and right. And a few scientists as well. So how did the people find out about it back in their home country, back in Europe and places? We've been open for two years. Uh, we've marked it very slowly at the moment on purpose because we are only employing local people. Uh, unfortunately, local people come with very little skills, mm -hmm. so they all have to be trained. That takes time. Uh, mm -hmm. We don't want to uh, be able so we've purposely gone very slowly. Uh, now we are mainly with all the main travel companies within Vietnam. Um, so they are marketing us to their clients. Uh, we also have our own website as well. Mm -hmm. So that is now starting to generate sales. Okay. Um, we've also had a few uh, articles in magazines and guidebooks. Right, right. Okay. Could you comment in general on ecotourism and in the industry and, and the role of that in conservation? Well, I can certainly, uh, I mean, in the general world, it, it, has, it has a potential to be very positive. Uh, in Vietnam, it's very new, uh, the whole concept for the Vietnamese of uh, protecting a forest and then making commercial um, revenue from it mm -hmm. through, through tourism and through right. protection is still a very new concept for them. Yeah, there's the more immediate poaching and the quick money-making deal exactly, is probably that's, the... That's what's been happening. Certainly in yeah. the last 20 years I've witnessed um, the wildlife only value to Vietnamese is how much you can sell it for. Right. Or uh, the forestry is how much any valuable timber can be sold for. Right. Now, just before I came here, I guess in October I heard on the news and the BBC that mm. the, the last uh, Javan rhino was killed right yeah. here in the park. That's right. Yeah. Um, very sad. When I first came here, there were probably a population of about seven. Um, so I think if the effort had been put in, I think they could have been saved. Um, again, it's controversial because there, there was money from conservation companies that was put in there. Um, in my opinion, it wasn't necessarily spent in the right way. Um, they were completely isolated, so mm -hmm. therefore the, the local people had no value from them. And they had none of that money themselves. Yeah, and they were completely isolated. So, I mean, the outsiders who came, you know, the fact that they knew where to go sounds a little bit suspicious to me. And so they might have had some local help or something. Well, yes, there are a lot of ethnic people in here, in here that know the forest very well. There are lots of uh, local people who know these forests extremely well. Mm -hmm. The rhino is not something that's... Um, going to disappear into large blocks of forest. It's actually a relatively small block of forest it was in. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it would be very hard to poach them. Okay. Likewise, I might suggest it would be therefore quite easy to have protected them. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to have, let's say, the expertise in order to do that. And I think you needed to open up to tourism. That would have given right. more access to tourists that could have right. brought revenue in to the local people. Mm -hmm. More people means more protection. Um, there's no easy solutions, and uh, you know, perhaps in hindsight it's easy to say these things, but that will be just my opinion. Now, um, there's other there's tigers here, there's other ones with market value, I suppose, animals. 
what do you suppose, if I could ask you to kind of project into the future? Um, I think that some of the biggest species are on the brink of extinction in Vietnam. There's a small population of elephant here. Uh, unfortunately, there is conflict with them. They have been killed, and also the elephants are killing now the local people. Uh, these people have come into the edge of the forests. There's, there's a commercial block of forest that adds to the national park. Um, there is conflict there. In reality, I think if the Vietnamese government wants to conserve these big mammals, they have to put a huge effort into protecting what is left here, moving local people out and compensating them, and encouraging the correct ecotourism. That will bring value to the local people. What do you think the prospect of that is, realistically? Uh, at the moment, I'm not very help, uh, hopeful. Um, there is the, the long term, the government has some very good policies. They're wanting to extend the park, protect what's left of the forest. Mm -hmm. But in any, any bureaucratic scheme, it takes uh, a long time to get various laws passed mm -hmm. and these things to happen. Right. That's the danger. It's what will be left uh, by the time that um, these laws and changes are in place. Um, because the population of most of these large mammals is small. Right. Um, I think the very long term future in Vietnam is probably going to be something like they will protect the forest. Um, there may be then scope for uh, captive breeding and reintroduction. But it just seems a shame to get to that stage when right now you could protect what you're Exactly, really exactly. Thank you very much. Pleasure.